Okay, good morning, guys. Let's continue chapter five. So as I said, guys, in this chapter, we will um, have different type of supports where we should solve the equilibrium equations of the sum of forces equal to zero and the sum of moments is equal to zero. Now, before going to the steps in order to solve the problems of this chapter, I want you to know the difference between internal and external forces. So basically, guys, internal force could be external if I change the free body diagram. So they are all related to the free body diagram, like the example of the laptop on the table. If I take my free body diagram as the laptop itself, this means that the force exerted or the reaction exerted from the table to this laptop will be external and it will be applied on this laptop. Now, if I take my free body diagram, the laptop and the table together, then this should be this force should be an internal force. It is internal, and this means that it will not be used in the statics equation or in the equilibrium equation that states that the sum of external forces is equal to zero and the sum of external moments is equal to zero. Which means, guys, if I have an internal force, this internal force should not be used or mentioned in the equations of equilibrium. Because in fact, guys, if I take the laptop and the table as my free body diagram, the laptop is doing an action on the table, which is its weight. Now, the table is doing a reaction on the laptop, which is two, uh, which is equal to minus the weight in vector form, and this is in order to hold it. This means, guys, that these two internal forces will be cancelled out they will be cancelled out if I put them in my equilibrium equations. And that's why there is no need to put the internal forces. So guys, you should, first of all, know what are the external forces applied on this body. And this is basically, as we said, it is related to the free body diagram chosen by you. Okay, so this is basically the difference between internal and external. And now, guys, I want you basically to assume, and this is an assumption, that besides of having a rigid body, we will consider that this rigid body has a weight that is external, and this weight is applied only on the center of gravity of this body. So we will assume, guys, that our weight is applied on the center of gravity, and this is the conventional method to show up the weight on a body. Okay. Now, let's find out the importance of this chapter 5 before going to the steps to solve the problems. Basically, guys, it is in modeling. It is in modeling. Basically, guys, if I have this real example, do you see this beam where I have some forces caused by these ladders, I think? So basically, guys, if I have this beam supported at A and B, and I have these three bodies doing a force on this beam, and I need to find out what are the reactions at A and B so that this body is in equilibrium. So basically, guys, I should model this beam. How to model it? I will model it as a slender beam in two decays, subjected to three forces, F, F, F. Basically, it could be F1, F2, F3. It is based on the weight. Placed at a certain location that is from this point to this point, from this point to this point, from this point to this point, until B. And where the first support is a pin because it is basically preventing the horizontal and the vertical translation. But it is not preventing the rotation because there is a clearance. Okay, so there is a clearance here, as you can see. So it is not preventing the rotation. It is only preventing the translational uh, motion. And a ruler at B, 
because it is only preventing the vertical motion. So I can do a horizontal motion. So this is basically the modeling of such beam. And now I have a statics problem where I can find the equilibrium equations and solve for the unknowns. Okay. So now guys, what are the steps to solve the problems of chapter five? The first step ever is to show the free body diagram. Guys, this is the first step ever because if you draw an incorrect free body diagram, you will have a wrong answer. This free body diagram will illustrate only the external forces and the external moment or couple moment. And then, guys, I should draw this free body diagram and I should pay attention to some notes. Like what? Like what are the reactions of supports on this body? Because in fact, guys, the reaction of supports are also external. And how to find out what are the reaction of supports? You have two methods. Either, guys, to know what is doing the support. So is it preventing the translation? Is it preventing uh, only the vertical displacement? Is it preventing the rotation? And then, based on this, you can put your reactions. Or you can, guys, memorize all the reactions for each type of support, like the roller, pin, fixed support, cable, weightless link, roller, rocker. And then, guys, you should show these reactions on your free body diagram because they are basically external forces. Internal forces are never shown on the free body diagram since they occur in equal but opposite collinear pairs and therefore they are cancelled out. The weight of a body, as I told you, is an external force and its effect is represented by a single resultant force acting through its center of gravity. Now, what you should know that the couple moments that are external could be placed anywhere on this beam because they are free vectors. Now, for the forces, guys, the forces are called sliding vectors because I can move them only on the line of action. So basically, guys, couple moments can be placed anywhere on your free body diagram since they are free vectors. Forces can act at any point along the lines of action since they are sliding forces. Oh, sorry, sliding vectors. Okay. So let's first, guys, apply the first step on this example, and then we will go to the second step and apply it also on this example. So as we said, guys, the first step is to show all the forces on this free body diagram, okay? So basically, guys, if I take this free body diagram shown here, what do I have here? I have a beam with what? With a fixed support at A. This is a fixed support, okay? And it is free to move at B because there is no support at B. This beam is subjected to a distributed load from A to B in triangular shape. So basically, guys, the intensity of this W or of this distributed load is 400 newton per meter. And this is a regular shape. So I can basically, if this is a regular shape, so I can find F resultant by only finding what? The area under the curve as we did in the last part of chapter 4. So the area under this curve is basically the base times the height over 2. Now the base is 6 meters. The height is 400 newton per meter, given here by W max. Basically, this is W max over 2. So it is basically 1200 newton now because I have multiplied the intensity by the length. So it is only in a newton. This is F resultant. This is not enough. I should put this F resultant on the center of gravity because I should find the moment afterwards. Okay. So I know, guys, that since I have a triangular shape, guys, memorize this rule. In the triangular shape, the center of gravity is dividing the base into one-third and two-thirds. 
Now, how to know if it is one third from O or from the first part at, point at the left or it is two third? Basically, guys, if I have uh, basically, guys, the center of gravity is always close to the heart. So it is always close to the heart. So basically, the center of gravity is here, which means it is located uh, at a distance of one over one over three of the base, far from A. So it is far from A by one over three of the base, and the base here is six. Six over three is two. So it is located at two. Now here, guys, you should pay attention to the question. Since the question here is giving us the weight of this beam, which is 100 kilograms, this means basically, guys, that there is a force, external force, which is the weight. So I should put also the weight, and this is the weight here. It is 981, which is 9.81 times 100 kilograms. It is at the middle point of the beam. So guys, don't be confused. This is not the weight of the distributed ball. No, it is the weight of the beam. And since the beam it has a rectangular shape, so of course, guys, the weight will be at the middle point of this beam. So it is at L over 2, which is 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. So this is the first step. Here, guys, I'm showing the external forces that are the force, resultant force from the distributed load 1200 newton located at a distance of 2 meters from A, and the weight, which is 981, located at uh, L over 2, which is 3 meters from A. Is it enough? Am I done, guys? No, because I have to show also the reactions. So here, guys, at A, I have three reactions because, in fact, A is a fixed support. So what are my reactions here? I have a vertical reaction, a horizontal reaction, and a moment reaction that prevents the rotation at A. Okay, so this is my free body diagram. Now it is complete. Let's move to the second step in this chapter.